Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the request response cycle in a Flask web app. In this tutorial, we will learn about the request response cycle in Flask, different attributes of the request object, different types of request data, several HTTP response codes. To record this tutorial, I am using Ubuntu Linux 16.04 operating system, Python 3.5.2, Atom Text Editor 1.22.1, and Firefox web browser. You can use any text editor and web browser of your choice. To follow this tutorial, you should have working knowledge of Linux commands, Python programming, and HTML syntax. If not, then please go through the corresponding tutorials on this website. We already said that the Flask app instance has to process the received request. For processing, the app instance needs to have access to certain information. A few objects are provided to the view functions where the processing takes place. One of these objects is the request object. This object encapsulates the contents of the HTTP request sent by the client. The incoming request data can be of several forms. For example, query arguments sent as part of the URL in the browser. Form data collected from waveforms. We will discuss them in detail in this tutorial. Let us open the terminal by pressing Ctrl, Alt and T key simultaneously on the keyboard. Now go to the folder project underscore flask which we created earlier using cd command. Let us activate our virtual env. Type the command dot space flask underscore vnv slash bin slash activate and press enter. Notice that we are now inside the virtual environment flask underscore vnv. Let's open the hello underscore flask dot py file in a text editor which we created earlier in this series. Let's look at how the request object is made available in a view function. We will import the request object from the flask library. In the line from flask import flask, we will add comma space request. The request object has many attributes. Let us access request inside the hello world view function. Next to the function definition, type the code as shown. This will print the method attribute of the request object. Save the file. Let us start the server to see the changes. Switch to the terminal. Type export space flask underscore app equal to hello underscore flask dot pi and press enter. Now type python3 space hyphen m space flask space run and press enter. Now open a web browser. In the address bar type localhost colon 5000 and press enter. We got the output as hello world. Switch to the terminal once again. Observe that the current request method is get. The request object is indeed accessible inside the view functions. The get HTTP method is used to retrieve data from the web server. It specifies the parameters in the URL of the request itself. Now, let us see how one can send data to the server using the request object. There are a number of ways to do this. The simplest one is via query arguments. Let us define a new route to explain this. Switch back to the editor. Before the if condition, type the code as shown here. We will call it as query. Save the file. Here we have written the statement inside the HTML's h1 heading tag. Here we can have an attribute called args in the request object. This is a dictionary object. It has the parsed contents of the query string in the URL. We will use this attribute to retrieve the data sent as query arguments. Switch to the terminal. Press Ctrl and C keys to stop the server. 
press the up arrow key to get the command to run the Flask application and press enter. Switch to the web browser. In the address bar, next to 5000, type slash query and press enter. We get a bad request error. Switch back to the terminal. Notice that this response has HTTP code 400. This is one of the common errors you will encounter while developing Flask applications. 400 code indicates that the server could not understand the request due to invalid syntax. So now we have to find out where this syntax issue has occurred. We will scan the code to spot the error. This is called debugging. For this, we have to start the server in the debug mode. Before that, we need to stop the current server by pressing Ctrl and C keys together. Then type export space flask underscore env equal to development and press enter. Now type python3 space hyphen m space flask space run and press enter. Observe that now it says debug mode is on. Go back to the browser and refresh the page. Since the debug mode is active, we have received a traceback of errors. This means that we get the line numbers where the errors have occurred in different files. The traceback includes the errors from the corresponding Flask files as well. This is because an error in one file causes errors in other files as well. This is termed as the cascading effect. We have to look for the error in a file that we have written. Scroll down and search for the error in the file hello underscore flask dot pi. We have a bad request key error. That means that the key framework for the dictionary request.args does not exist. To rectify this, we have to modify that line. Switch to the editor. Now change the line as shown. Save the file. Now even if the key is not found, Python will handle this properly. That means, instead of causing a 400 error, it will return none. Switch to the terminal. Once again, stop the server by pressing Ctrl and C keys together. Then run the server again. Go back to the browser and rephrase the page. Now we have the output as expected. The framework value is none. Next, we will send some value for the framework via the URL. ARGS gets a part of the URL after the question mark in the form of a Python dictionary. In the address bar, next to the word query, type question mark framework equal to my underscore flask and press enter. So now we have the framework attribute of the dictionary set to my underscore flask. We got the result as expected. The request object has one more important attribute called form. It can be used to collect data from the user using a waveform and then store the data as a dictionary in the form attribute. Let us look at an example. We will see how form data can be sent and received using the request object. Let us define a new route called form. We will allow both get and post as possible request methods. Type the code as shown here. Inside the form route, define a view function my underscore form. This block will get executed if the request is via post method. In post request method, the client will send data to the server using the form. This is to update the server with some information. For example, you enter your username and password while logging into a website. In contrast, get request method is used to get or read some data from the server now let us store the form values into some variables we will obtain the entered values from the request object using the form attribute inside the if condition we check the post method type this code 
This code will display the first name as well as the last name. Now, outside this if condition, we type this code. This will simply display a waveform in the output if the request method is get. Save the file. Switch back to the terminal. Stop the server by pressing Ctrl and C keys together. Then run the server again. Switch to the browser. In the address bar, type the URL as http colon double slash localhost colon 5000 slash form and press enter. The page is displayed with the form. Let us enter some values in the form. I will type the first name as spoken, last name as tutorial and then click on the submit button located at the bottom of the waveform. Here we have received the first name and last name from the request object. The last thing I want to talk in this section is about 500 internal server error. This is one of the most frequent errors you will encounter during Flask app development. Let us write a code snippet to demonstrate this. Switch back to the editor. In the user view function, before the return statement, type a equal to 10 slash 0. As we are dividing 10 by 0, we should get an error. Save the file. Switch to the terminal. Stop the server by pressing Ctrl and C keys together. Now run the server again. Switch to the browser. In the address bar, type the URL as localhost colon 5000 slash user slash said and press enter. Observe that we have a zero division error. Let's switch to the terminal to see the HTTP status code. Here we can see HTTP response code as 500, which means we have encountered an internal server error. The 500 error simply implies that there is something wrong in the web server. Since we have the debug mode on, we know the specific reason for the error. With this, we come to the end of this tutorial. Let us summarize. In this tutorial, we learnt about the request response cycle in Flask, different attributes of the request object, different types of request data, several HTTP response codes. The video at the following link summarizes the spoken tutorial project. Please download and watch it. The Spoken Tutorial Project team conducts workshops and gives certificates. For more details, please write to us. Please post your timed queries in this forum. Spoken Tutorial Project is funded by NMEICT, MHRD, Government of India. More information on this mission is available at this link. This is Siddhartha Sarkar signing off. Thanks for watching.